Well, Madam Justice, I have, a, I have a two prong question for you. Number one, is it time for term limits in the Supreme Court, like justices here in Massachusetts? And two, what do you think, as Senator Markey has suggested, that the court actually be packed, be expanded, add more justices to the court? It's absolute time for the court to have term limits. It is the only court in the world of democracy similar to ours that don't have what I call a single lengthy term, either a number of years or age. So England, Canada, Israel, Australia, wherever you want to look, Germany, France, everybody has a single lengthy term. Term. I've been arguing this for 20 years. And by the way, we have that in Massachusetts. Originally, we had for life, for life at the time of the United States Constitution was about 48 years. It's now in the 90s. It's about time. We have to change the Constitution and people have to get working on it now because probably like Massachusetts, mm -hmm. the existing justices will be grandfathered. What, what about, pack, yeah, I was going to say more justices on the court. court. Yeah. Packing the court, uh, look, it was attempted by Franklin Roosevelt. Uh, it did not succeed, but the reason why uh, President Roosevelt was attempting it was because the United States Supreme Court was constantly blocking what he considered essential legislative decisions uh, to get us out of the Deep Depression. Um, I think that once you start packing the court, um, the next general, the next president will you know, continue that, but the court, United States Supreme Court, did change its jurisprudence when there was a serious threat of packing the court. These are political decisions. I would not second guess them. I think there has been an attempt by the current um, majority leader of the Senate, I regret to say so, to hijack the court and to push through the people that he wants in a way that we have not seen we have not seen for a very, very long time. This is a great and revered institution. It's a critical piece of our constitutional democracy. And I think that until we can get back where there is some understanding that the United States Supreme Court is not a political football, should not be a political football, I think it is fair to have every single option on the table. And so I respect you know, both Senator Markey and some of the most mm -hmm. thoughtful people, by the way, uh, on term limits, left and right, uh, theorists agree with that. On packing the court, less so, of course, because it's never been done. But there is no constitutional limit on how many justices there should be. Perhaps it would be a good idea. We're a huge country. Perhaps it would be better to have 11 justices. I mean, there are many courts that are bigger than, than nine, and there are courts that are smaller. So um, I'm not going to say that that's not something that should be looked at very carefully understanding there are huge political consequences if uh, either uh, party undertakes to do this. We don't have a great deal of time left, but before you go, I do want to ask you about the two openings on the Massachusetts Supreme Court where you served for many years. What is missing on that court right now that needs filling at this point as far as the members that should be nominated? Janet, you know, I don't, I don't want to say anything's missing because they're wonderful justices, but what one has to look at is life experience. And so I would say, first of all, there is something, not entirely, something of the similarity of the experiences of some, several of the justices. Um, I always like, and I'm sure he won't like me to hold him up this way, but I always like to think of Justice Cordy. He was a prosecutor, he was a defense attorney, he was in private practice, and he worked in state government. Now, not everybody can have that kind of experience, but I certainly think there's a shortage of really in-depth experience on civil cases, although Justice Budd, of course, um, had a long and, and distinguished history in that regard. Uh, they as far as I can recall off the top of my head, we don't have anybody who's been a defendant for any a defense attorney. I hope they won't be defendants for any length of term. Um, I think it would it would sadden me greatly if we didn't keep to having at least three women justices, if not four. I like Justice Ginsburg until they're seven. I'm never going to be satisfied. <laughs> um, but there was a moment when Justice Abrams and I were on the court. There were four women justices. Um, but I care less about what the person looks like than what the experience is. No. Um, so is you know, have you been 
um, I mean, for example, have you had any experience in the housing court, in the probate and family court? I mean, think of what's going on in the housing court at the moment. Um, I think the governor just has such a rich panoply of fabulous lawyers from whom to choose. And I hope that what he will do, which is what every other governor has done, is to say, politics doesn't matter. Who is going to serve the people of Massachusetts the best? Who brings the greatest amount of experience? Who has judicial temperament? Who is, you know, who, who will not think that as soon as they put on this particular black robe that they have any special dispensation to be rude or arrogant or whatever it is? I mean, it's a wonderful Madam, court. Madam, but, um, Madam, great <laughs> Madam Justice, it, it is such a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much for your time this morning. We greatly appreciate it.